Welcome to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Join me on a journey back home to your truest self in this inspiring, enlightening, and entertaining show. After a near-death experience in a car crash at 15 years old, I made a choice to stay and brought back with me three simple truths that I found from the other side. Love is all there is. Our time is over here quicker than we think. And we all have a purpose, a soul blueprint to fulfill. On this show, you will find a higher purpose, a creative expression, and unique soul attributes that you can bring forth into this world. Stay tuned with me for the next hour and find your higher purpose on My Wild Magic, starting now. Welcome, everyone. I'm Adrienne Cobb, and you're listening to My Wild Magic with Adrienne on Transformation Talk Radio. So uh, today we're going to be looking at um, one of the spirit hacks that I have been using for years now, and it's one that's been given to us by um, the spiritual hierarchy and uh, some of the angelic realms, and it's the energy of the Saint um, Saint Germain's Violet Transmuting Flame. It's an invaluable tool for helping to transmute and clear our emotional body, particularly. And uh, along with that, we'll also be um, bringing in um, the flame of purity and clearing out the mental body. So clearing out the mental and emotional bodies are going to be very helpful as we move through our day, particularly when we pick up on the thought forms and emotions, um, not only within ourselves but also projections, and then also what we empath from people around us. So to clear up your emotional body, that's the one where we're going to be using that violet transmitting flame. And then to clear up the mental body, we'll be using the flame of purity. And uh, I think you'll be amazed at the results you can start getting um, in your life with, with some of these spirit hacks that are, like I said, pretty, pretty gifted, pretty amazing little tools here. So let's open up today by getting connected because that's going to help a lot. Anytime we're going to be working with angels, ascended masters and beings, you know, it's helpful to be able to clear our energy field to be as clear as possible to allow your intuition to be at its finest and to be an open conduit without a lot of things kind of in the way. So just breathing in and out for a moment and just watching that natural rise and fall of your breath, like just breathing in and breathing out, breathing in and breathing out. And ideally, it's like a yogic breath of about five and a half breaths. So I'm just breathing in to the count of five. And that half a breath is right at the emptiness of the top and then breathing out five. And then that half of that empty breath at the bottom. And we're just gonna do about three of these breaths. So again, just breathing in. And breathing out, watching it as it moves up and down the spinal column, breathing through the nose and breathing down into your lower belly. And breathing up. The spinal column. And then breathing back down the spinal column. I just want you to notice how even just those three basic breaths can make a world of difference coming back to the present moment and just feeling a little more centered, a little bit more in your body, that kind of energy, right? Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and connect now to that source energy. Imagine there's like a portal of light about 300 feet above your head, this big, beautiful portal of light. And we just want you to connect to that portal of light above your head to source energy. You might notice a swirling energy, a golden, a white light. It could be any color or image that comes to you, anything you sense, see, feel, or know. And then we're going to command down the tube of pure electronic white light, that cosmic force of pure love and light streaming all the way down through our body. And just feeling that as it comes in and just connects to the crown chakra, that 
cosmic. It's a cosmic frequency of pure love and light connects to the crown chakra, almost like it's locking into that crown chakra, streaming through your inner vision that you can see through the all consuming flame of pure love and light coming into your ears that you can hear the highest truth of pure love and light that you can speak in your throat, the highest truth of pure love and light that you can feel within your heart the highest truth of pure love and light and that you're making compatible life choices for yourself. And then going into your solar plexus, breathing into feeling safe, secure, supplied with that pure love and light streaming through that chakra, going into your navel chakra, that energy of pure love and light, going all the way down into the second chakra where you're able to digest life, you're able to be congruent within yourself, be in touch with your own sacral truth. And then going down the perineum, the first chakra, that you're now grounded in pure love and light. And that you can, that you feel like you belong here on the earth, grounded and imagine this beautiful vortex of light, capturing the energy of the heavens coming down, like it comes in like a big vortex and it comes down into the first chakra, and then that vortex goes wide again down into the earth itself. And you can imagine sending like a tube of white light, maybe roots, maybe a waterfall, allowing your energies to gently ground into the heart of the earth. And as that energy is grounding into the heart of the earth, and you just want to imagine plugging into a place that feels really good for you, a place that feels really harmonious, positive, loving for you, abundant, supportive, supplying, knowing that the earth's energy is its own source energy and that uh, it's here to supply you, support you in any way that it can. It's like, um, it's like just breathing into a warm hug a place that's very peaceful, rejuvenating, regenerating. And, you know, another thing that you can do when you travel is that you can, uh, if you know where you're going to be, it actually helps you to adjust time zones. So um, I recently traveled from Portland over to Atlanta, Asheville, and um, Huntsville this last week to see relatives and to check out Asheville. So I'm thinking about possibly heading that direction, maybe um, moving there. So I went to go check it out. And so on the plane or even that morning before I leave, I go ahead and um, send my grounding cord that I do every morning, except for now I'm going to send it over to where I'm, you know, to... Atlanta, where I'm landing, or Asheville, or Huntsville, wherever it is you're going, right? So you send that grounding cord. There's about a three-hour time difference here. And when you ground your energy over there, what it does is it starts shifting your consciousness. It opens up kind of like a wormhole of energy for you to travel more easily, more gracefully. And when you go to make that time zone difference, it actually helps you to um, catch up with the time zones by being grounded in the area you're going to. And so that's really helpful if you're going to Europe or a bigger, bigger time zone shift is send your grounding cord to the place that you're going and start grounding there the day that you're taking your trip. And you'll feel that you just make a easier adjustment um, and that you don't have any problem with the time zones, which I really didn't, it, it kind of integrated very easily. And then again, when you come back home, put that time zone you know, send your grounding cord back to where you're going back home ahead of time, the day you're traveling and send it back. And you'll find that you adjust very easily. So that's kind of a cool spirit hack for anybody who travels a lot um, and uh, wants to be more in rhythm when you get to where you're going. Okay. So now we're going to bring that grounding energy all the way up from the earth, up to the bottoms of your feet, your knees, your hips, all the way up into your heart and just expanding around your heart. Expanding around your heart center like a great sun, like a great golden sun of light or whatever color comes in for you. 
And we're just calling forth to our I am presence, take command of our energy field and expand through us the energy of the great central sun expanding through us, your own cosmic Christ presence expanding through you. And just feeling this big ball of light all around you, like you're just in the middle of this big glowing, effervescent, radiant ball of light. And just hold yourself there for a moment, just noticing how that feels. <clears throat> being held in this light. And then we're going to go ahead and add into this energy right now. It's a, it's a statement, right? And it's a, it's a true statement. It's a true statement related to our soul energy. And so it's an, I am statement. I am the all consuming flame of unconditional love. And so just breathing that in for yourself. I am the all consuming flame of unconditional love. And just noticing how that feels around you. I'm the all consuming flame of unconditional love and just feeling all this like kind of spirit love, all this higher dimensional energy and love enfolding you that you really don't have to do anything to be loved in this world. And I think the sooner any of us could realize that, um, the better our whole life will flow. Like the minute you don't feel like you have to barter, beg, plead, sell yourself out, give up, compromise. Um, in order to feel safe or to feel loved, it's going to go a long way. So just breathing in and out to that energy. Breathing in and out of that energy. I'm the all-consuming flame of unconditional love. And just feeling you being in integrity with yourself, that you're deeply, divinely, unconditionally loved beyond measure. You're at peace within yourself. And it's just lining up your energy. Again, it's not something that, uh, it doesn't matter that we say it on a human level. What happens is sometimes there's universal truths. And whenever you speak a universal truth, a soul truth, when you hear it, your body resonates to it. So I don't even have to convince you of this. It's just already there. I'm the all consuming flame of unconditional love. And that helps to bring you into integrity within all the relationships within yourself because you have multiple relationships going on inside yourself to your inner child, your soul, your personality, your ego, your higher self, your I am presence, cosmic Christ presence to your tribes of light, to the universe, to source energy, uh, to angels. So there's just all these different relationships, all your different emotions and feelings and thoughts. So it's really good to be congruent and at peace within yourself. And if all parts of you felt heard, because all parts of you have a right to be heard, then what happens is you can be way more unconditionally loving uh, with others when you get to speak your truth or to figure out what's in your highest good, highest alignment. And that's probably a really big deal for all of us is getting emotionally and mentally clear so that we can figure out who we are in our own body and to kind of reset our day for that. And uh, so the violet transmuting flame and the flame of purity helps us to, it kind of gives us an extra boost to consume some of the negativity, fear, discord, human effluvia that collects around us during a day, whether it's from within us, whether it's from our genetic lineage, whether it's from um, other people projecting, whether it's from the collective, whether it's interdimensional, whether it's, you know, generational. So there's a lot of things that go on that we have to navigate. So again, the minute you return back to knowing yourself, I am the all consuming flame of unconditional love makes a very big difference in having a centered foundation that's very stable for you in order to move forward with your life and to have the emotional, mental, spiritual, physical clarity to be able to feel empowered about what you're going to manifest. And the violet transmitting flame is helpful as a manifestation tool as well. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to jump into learning about that violet transmitting flame. So stay tuned. Welcome back. So, uh, okay. So, um, we're going to be jumping into the violet transmuting flame and learning a little bit more about that now. And 
Violet transmuting flame helps with um, energetic frequencies. And so a lot of the rays that we talk about that come from archangels or ascended masters, universal rays, cosmic rays, star transmissions of light, they're frequencies of energy. And so they're like kind of like vibrational medicine in a way, vibrational consciousness. And the deal is that we're all vibrational beings before we are physical matter. So we see ourselves as physical matter, but in quantum physics, we're just beams of energy, right? And that's really our truth. So when you leave this world, your vibration goes back into, you know, its energetic form. When you're dreaming, when you're soul traveling at night, you're in energetic form when you're meditating. So we are energy before we are matter. That's why energy medicine can be very, very helpful, whether that is a uh, energy medicine, such as the, uh, the Healy, which is a cool little vibrational tool or, um, uh, Reiki or, um, other, you know, violet transmuting flame, which, which we're going to cover today. So there's a lot of different energy vibrations. Um, homeopathics would be kind of in that same field, flower essences or vibrational medicine. So all these things help us and the more fine tuned we are to our body and our energy field, the more we can feel those subtle shifts. And when you can start sensing something ahead of time in your energy field, like in other words, if you feel like something's a bit off or a bit out of balance, or there's an emotion or a thought form, then what happens is you can clean it up like let's say it's emotional, you might use a flower essence, or maybe there's a physical thing going on, but it's still energetic a little bit. You know, homeopathy can work really well or Reiki. So with the violet transmuting flame, what we're specifically clearing in our energy field is it's a combination of negativity, fear, human effluvia, uh, and discord. So human discord, human effluvia. And the way the Ascended Masters teach about human effluvia um, or discord, discordant energy, is that as human beings, we have this um, uh, emotions and thoughts that kind of create our energy field. And then we vibrate at that level. Well, for people, if any of us kind of harbor or carry negative emotions or thought forms on a more regular basis, it not only lives within our body and affects the cells of our body, the water we drink, the food we eat, but it also connects us to the morphogenetic field. So if you have a whole bunch of people in a country or collectively that are fearful, then that creates like this vibration of fear, which also then happens to attract in other entities and things that maybe want to ride in on feeding on that negativity. So you want to start with your individual consciousness first. And then, and if you can start to keep your individual consciousness clean and clear from gossip, projections, criticism, blame, um, denialism, you know, uh, a lack of self-love, confidence and things like that, your whole body will vibrate, your health will shift, your finances will shift, the people you attract in your life will shift. And um, sometimes we're even really kind of born with certain negative thought forms and emotions that have been passed down generationally, like certain concepts of fear around, let's say, survival, abandonment, rejection, there's not enough in the world. You know, people who grew up in the depression or certain wars, and this can go back many different generational lineages, right? So this can go back to, you know, energy that goes back quite a ways. And so you could go back five, 10, 12 generations and have a trauma, a thought form that got stuck. And then that's what's taught or passed down with every child that goes through that lineage up until you. And then you have the option, which is so cool because we all have free will you have the option to be able to shift the consciousness, work through it and not repeat the same patterns over and over and over. So you might've noticed, you know, ever hearing that sometimes when there's suicide in the family, that suicide will continue until somebody can interrupt it. Or if there is, um, you know, loss of 
loved ones that can play out or certain illnesses that play out or even wealth and abundance or really good things too. So it just depends on what's kind of been programmed into your family. So the violet transmuting flame is literally a violet flame of light. And where it comes from, it's a gift of the ascended masters, and it is one of the flames of creation in our human world. So we have seven chakras in our body. The violet transmuting flame actually resonates at the first chakra, the base of the body at the perineum, and it is literally a transmuting flame. So as we walk through this world, the violet flame helps us to literally transmute any form of negativity, fear, discord, and human effluvia we come across, and it clears our space. And, you know, in human form, we're all maybe going to come up, you know, have moments of that, right? So it's a tool that we've been given to help keep your emotional body clean. It's like, um, it's like a little violet tornado of light that helps to keep your, your energy clean and um, cleaned up. And so I call it in every day. And if you do healing work, I highly recommend it because I, any session I go into, I always Um, I will always call in the violet transmuting flame anytime I do a session because it helps with the energy. It helps to consume energy as we go into the session. And I find that I am not drained of any energy. I'm not having to transmute and consume energy myself. I'm calling in the violet transmuting flame to consume the energy for me. And so it's a great, great tool for people who do healing work with others if you're nurses, if you're doctors, if you're healers, if you do counseling work, um, and you don't really have to say it out loud, it's just something you're doing, you know, it's great to start your day with it. And when you go into a, a session or with a client or a patient, I'm just calling in the violet transmuting flame around me and that person. And it's really that simple, that energy comes in. So the ascended master that governs the violet transmuting flame is Saint Germain. And so St. Germain is one of the Ascended Masters, oftentimes known as the Wonder Man of Europe. And uh, and so Ascended Masters have had different lifetimes where they were in human form. And sometimes they do have past lives that would be memorable um, because they, they have, they've made history in some way. Um, and then as they cross over, they you know kind of go into their higher self form and they don't really have to come back into the wheel of karma. They don't really have to come back into this world any longer. And, um, but the difference with an ascended master, because not all souls have to come back, but ascended masters are like one octave above us. So if we were considered to be third dimensional realm energy here in physical form, ascended masters might be fourth dimensional energy, right? Like they're just one dimension above us and they're considered our big brothers and big sisters. So that would be like St. Germain, Mother Mary, uh, Kuan Yin, Isis, uh, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Serapis Bay, Lord Lanto, Lady Portia. Um, so there's, there's just a number of them. And it's its own octave of light. So you can call it in as the, um, the spiraling blue flame of the Ascended Master octave. And that kind of covers the whole realm. And it opens up a portal, a doorway, a gateway, straight to work with the Ascended Masters, if that's something you, you like, that you have a preference for. So every flame of creation, each of our chakras has um, an ascended master that has to govern it. And so St. Germain helps govern the violet transmuting flame. There's also an archangel. So the ascended master teaches us the mastery, how to be masterful of our creations or manifestations in that flame. The ascended, the archangel helps us to know the feeling tone. So for the violet transmuting flame, archangel Zadkiel, Z-A-D-K-I-E-L, Archangel Zadkiel helps us to carry the feeling tone of the violet transmuting flame. And we're going to work with Archangel Zadkiel here here too in just a minute. And Archangel Zadkiel helps us to consume and transform all of our soul contracts, soul agreements, things that we've completed, things that we don't need hanging out, things that maybe we never had to deal with, that we just made contracts with people and we made agreements that maybe weren't in our best interest for whatever thing we were trying to learn from, right? So Archangel Zadkiel is really great at just transmuting all that energy 
and kind of cleaning up and freeing up that space between you and others on that level. And then within Archangel Zadkiel and St. Germain, there's the Violet Flame Angels, and I love working with them. And I send the Violet Flame Angels out into my day to clear my, the path of my day. Um, if I'm going to take a trip to send the Violet Flame Angels out to clear the energy of where I'm traveling, weather patterns, timing of events, rental cars, airplanes, uh, people I'm going to come across, etc. So the Violet Flame Angels, I can send it into my future self, into my future path, and they clear energy that way. Um, Lady Portia is the female Ascended Master for this ray, the counterpart to St. Germain, and deals with um, that energy of really Lady Portia, that higher energy of divine justice and clarity and that kind of energy. So we'll call her in as well. Um, and then the Elohim is the other final being that carries that ray is the Elohim of the violet transmuting flame. So that's a cosmic angel that brings the ray forth. The ascended master teaches you how to master the ray and the archangel teaches you the feeling tone because we're in human form. So we're going to kind of work with a little bit with all of them because you may find that you like one more than another, or you can just even work with the violet transmuting flame itself. So stay tuned, come back in a moment, and we are going to call it into some activity of your life and start practicing with the Violet Transmitting Flame. All right, welcome back. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start working with the Violet Transmitting Flame now that you got a little bit of um, energy around, a little bit of understanding to it. So when you call in a flame of creation, you literally kind of, uh, you can activate it from the chakra that it's located in, but you can also just see yourself as a violet flame or a pink flame of divine love or a golden flame of divine wisdom. So in this case, I just want you to imagine just seeing yourself as a violet transmuting flame. So in other words, like starting maybe from the first chakra, activating around your energy field, but this flame goes from your feet all the way up around your head and it's just like this big violet transmuting flame. And we're just going to ask it to start clearing your energy field first. And I just want you to notice the difference kind of before and after. So I'm unfolding myself. Again, it's always an I am statement with your I am presence. I am, it's like a command. I am the all-consuming violet transmuting flame. I am the all-consuming violet transmuting flame. And I usually bring in perfection. I am the all-consuming violet transmuting flame of perfection. What it's doing is, in a very subtle level, if you're paying attention, it's actually bringing, it's, the violet flame actually starts consuming any kind of shadow energy, negative energy, uh, lower vibrational energy. It starts consuming it off the cells, the electrons, your emotional body, your auric field the all-consuming violet transmitting flame. So it starts clearing that space. It's taking a deep breath and allowing it to intensify. I am the all-consuming violet transmitting flame of perfection. And it's bringing all your energy field back into its own divine perfection. It's like, it's re it's like a reset. It's resetting your energy, particularly emotionally, in your auric field. It cleanses all your chakras, all your electrons. It's like a cleansing, bathing violet light. Okay, now we're going to expand it out a little bit further, and we're going to send the violet transmuting flame out around wherever you are right now, your home, your vehicle, your office space, wherever you're at. So just sending out that violet transmuting flame, and let's just go with the home for now. And we're going to cleanse your home. Like every week when I, like when I clean my house, I always call in the violet transmuting flame and I do a whole cleansing on it energetically as well as physically because of the type of energy work and sessions I do with, with people. So the violet transmuting flame, breathing in and out, violet transmuting flame. of perfection in and around my house and just notice your entire home, all the rooms, all the furniture, all the electrons that make up the walls and the atoms, 
the entire energy of your place. It's sort of like saging, but you're doing it with this flame of light. The all-consuming violet transmuting flame. And I send the violet transmuting flame angels throughout my entire home, cleansing and clearing it, going into all the corners, the closets, the floor, the doorways, the portals, the windows being sealed in the violet transmuting flame that no negativity, fear, discord of human effluvia may enter here, that everything has to walk through or come through because sometimes we have portals and doorways, windows, um, all kinds of things, right? That everything that comes through has to walk through that a curtain of violet transmitting flame. It has to be bathed in that violet transmitting flame in order to come in. That also is super, super helpful for keeping entity, negativity, fear, bad feng shui out. And it also helps, um, um, you know, just cleansing energy. And it also helps the vibration of your place to be healthier as well. Like there's a cleansing that density um, because whenever we have stuck emotions that we haven't fully processed through, like some people carry depression, some people carry anxiety and they just live with it day in and day out. Well, this will start helping you to transmute it. But the other thing is that whatever emotions you tend to linger in that are not of a higher vibration, that love or above vibration, they can create what's called elemental life force energies. So it's, it's sort of like your emotion gathers enough elemental life force, very crude elementary life force that it can actually kind of live on its own. Like it can live a little bit away from your body. So when somebody walks into your house, they might feel like this cloud, this like rudimentary kind of globule of energy that is depressing or anxious or scared or anger or fear, whatever emotion might be hanging out from you or others in your home. So it's not exactly an entity, which is a little more conscious. It's more rudimentary than that. Um, but it can be, it can sort of linger if you spend a lot of time in a certain position, like a chair or um, your bed or whatever, it can kind of linger. So if you were to take that chair then to the uh, a thrift store, somebody buys the chair. If you had a lot of loving energy, comforting energy, they'll be like, oh my gosh, I just love sitting in this chair. I feel so comforted by this energy. And then sometimes the chair might feel very depressing or maybe there's alcoholism or there's fear, other things. So that's the thing about buying things that are used, which is cool. I really agree with that. So we don't, you know, overuse the environment, but you want to cleanse used cars and used furniture and used clothing um, or houses that you just move into or spaces like I go into a hotel room or an Airbnb, I always want to cleanse it with the violet transmuting flame because there's energy lingering from energy streams of people before me. So you can call in the violet transmuting flame to cleanse and clear your entire home, the violet flame of perfection. Now plants love the violet transmuting flame. The violet transmuting flame being of the first chakra is also very connected and works not only with the emotional body, the inner child, the auric field, because the aura registers emotions, um, but it, it works a lot with the elementals and the devas too. So you can bless a plant with the violet transmuting flame and it loves it. Babies and animals love the violet transmuting flame. Whenever I am on a plane and there's a baby or a young child that might be crying or an animal on the flight, um, I will oftentimes just send the violet transmuting flame directly to them and they'll stop crying or they'll stop you know, barking or whining or whatever, because the violet flame starts consuming because little babies, children, animals, plants are so sensitive to other people's thought forms and emotions. And if you're highly psychic, intuitive, empathic, you are as well, right? And so the violet flame, just unfolding yourself in your day, sending the violet flame angels out into your day, unfolding your home in it, your vehicle in it, uh, any place that you're going to be spending time, like work, hotel rooms, Airbnbs, um, or let's say you go to a friend or family's house, call in the violet transmuting flame, and it just does everybody justice. It just helps everybody with that, right? And um, so St. Germain, you can kind of add to it. I'm calling forth St. Germain's all-consuming violet transmuting flame, just allowing that energy of St. Germain's consciousness come in. And, and anytime you call in an ascended master, an angel, it will actually amplify energy. So you can call it in as your own I am presence. 
And then when you call in an angel, ascended master, an Elohim, it will just amplify their mastery through you and intensify the energy even more so. So that's why it's fun sometimes and, and really good to work with angels and ascended masters more consciously. Although your consciousness can do it in and of itself, it's nice to have um, that amplification of light come through. Um, also, if you have relationship issues. So now I want you to imagine a relationship issue that you're seeking greater clarity or peace with on some level, maybe there's some emotional discord of some sort. So I want you to think about a particular relationship that just comes to mind. So just breathing in and out of a relationship that comes to mind. And uh, as that energy starts to open up, and I just want you to imagine making a heart-to-heart -heart connection between you and that person, you and that person. That violet transmitting flame between you and that person. And I'm calling in the all-consuming violet transmitting flame of perfection between me and this person, consuming any negativity, fear, discord, human effluvia between us, any projections, so calling in that energy, clearing the space. And I just want you to imagine you and that person enfolded in the violet transmuting flame. You and that person enfolded in the violet transmuting flame. And just noticing this violet flame between you instantly transmuting any um, projections, fears, and just revealing the highest perfection, the highest truth between the both of you, releasing any discord, stories, projections, illusions, the all consuming violet transmuting flame between me and this other person bringing the highest truth into our relationship. And we're gonna go ahead and call in that cosmic force of pure love and light between you and that person, blessing myself and blessing this other person in the cosmic force of pure love and light, the all consuming violet transmuting flame, bringing us both back to peace, harmony, grace, the highest truth, clearing that energy. And just noticing how that feels for a moment. Just letting that settle in. Noticing if any emotions come up between you and that person. Is there any sorrow, fear, anger? Any grief, any unfulfilled desires, anything you're wanting or needing from them that you're not getting? Just let all of it come up. The violet transmuting flame can deal a lot with our inner child, deals with the emotional body, which usually deals a lot with our unconscious and our um, inner child. So the violet flame can be very, very graceful tool, helping our inner child to feel safe and heard and other people's inner child to feel safe and heard too. So let that integrate for a moment. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back in just a moment and start clearing out any soul contracts that we might have with Archangel Zadkiel. Welcome back. Okay, so we are working with the violet transmuting flame, and we've been transmuting our bodies, our emotions, our homes, our pets, our plants, um, again, they all love it. And, uh, again, you know, so when you bring that violet transmuting flame through your home, your plants and pets will for sure. Thank you. And when people come into your house, um, you know, even if you clean your house physically, when you clean it with the violet transmuting flame by visualizing it, like a big kind of, uh, vortex of light, like a big drain going down into the earth. So you imagine this big violet light cleansing and clearing your entire home, all the walls, the electrons, the furniture, the atoms, the plants, the animals, 
you know, just everything about your home. And then you imagine it like a drain, just draining down into the earth of anything that doesn't belong, anything that no longer serves, cleansing and clearing that space. Um, and then you can also bring in that cosmic force of pure love and light, just again, cleansing and clearing straight from source energy, washing all the way through, blessing your home in love or above energy and the violet transmitting flame of perfection. And people oftentimes will feel it and become so relaxed when they're in your environment because they're not having to work so hard to kind of balance the energy themselves. Like I know for me, if I go into somebody's home, because I'm a high empath. So if I go into somebody's home and their plants aren't doing good, I feel it. Their animals aren't doing good. Their kids, I feel it. If their home is energetically not clean, I feel it. So um, because I kind of do this for a living, I might notice it, but I promise you, we all feel it. Even people who don't register energy at all will on some level, because we're all energetic beings, pick up on it and feel it. And you just, some places feel better than others. And a lot of times it's the energy that we're, that we're holding in our space um, that we do that with. So that's a real conscious way of doing that. So the um, um, other thing that can be very helpful then with using the violet transmuting flame is we want to call into Archangel Zadkiel. So Archangel Zadkiel. And um, just notice that presence, you know, the presence of St. Germain, notice how St. Germain feels to you. Calling an Archangel uh, Zadkiel, noticing how that Archangel feels when you call it in around your energy field. And, uh, yeah, just feeling that space, Archangel Zadkiel. And now what I want you to do is we're going to go back and we're going to do this primarily with your birth parents. So whether you were adopted, knew your birth parents, they're alive, they've already transitioned, doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and call forth to, um, to the energy of your mother and your father. Calling forth Archangel Zadkiel and folding us. And we want to start consuming any soul contracts and soul agreements, soul oaths that we've made this lifetime or other lifetimes, let's say all time, space, dimension and realities, because sometimes, you know, people from other places and you're karmically playing things out. And so this kind of really helps transmute karma as well, right? So I'm calling in the all-consuming violet transmuting flame of Archangel Zadkiel, overlighting me, my mother, my biological mother, my biological father from this uh, lifetime, all time, space, dimension, parallel dimensional realities. And going back through all of my heritage, Angels are great at helping do heritage healing, lineage healing. So I'm going back through my mother's lineage and my father's lineage. Because, you know, the, the lineage grows really, really fast. You have a mother and a father. You go one step back, all of a sudden you've got two grandmothers and two grandfathers. You go a little bit further back, all of a sudden you've got eight. <laughs> and it goes, you know, 2048 very easily adds up just going back a very short distance when you start multiplying that kind of number and all of these people in a way make up who you are. So all of their genetics, all the things that they might've been affected by toxins, pollutants, emotions, traumas, gifts, um, intuitions, blessings, it all kind of funnels down and your the chemistry of your body is sort of holding a little bit of all of that. And you might lean a little more towards certain things than others um, based on who you are as a unique soul. But that's something to keep in mind. So on one level, we are like the, the um, you know, the, the convolution. We are all of that energy brought into your physical body and what you're going to be experiencing is influenced by that. So all we want to do is clean it up because you're learning from all of it. Your soul's evolving from all of it. So it's not like there's anything wrong or bad. We're just wanting to clean up the energy. 
So now we're opening up again, Archangel Zadkiel, just feeling this beautiful beloved angel coming into our energy field and um, presenting to us let's say between your mother, your father, but then we're going to go and ask that it go back through all the lineage back to conception and inception. So all the way back through the first relationship on earth in your lineage, very first human relationship coming in on earth in your lineage, all the way back to the time of inception, conception, and noticing, I just want you to notice on the inner levels, all the soul contracts, soul oaths, soul agreements that have been made between you and these groups, this group soul that you are sort of a part of. Some are yours, some are not, some you've taken on, some are unnecessary, some have already been fulfilled, some are harmful, some are helpful. And so any soul agreement, oath, contract, that is no longer helpful for you and your highest soul's evolution, we're gonna to ask to be enfolded and placed in the all-consuming, the altar of the all-consuming violet transmuting flame. And noticing as uh, Archangel Zachiel has almost like a stack of these um, language of light, like a, a stack of these, um, these contracts, these oaths, these things that you have maybe a relationships and things that you've taken on. And asking them to all be transmuted now, all unnecessary, harmful, unhelpful contracts, because you got free will, you get to decide what's in your best interest. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm, I'm gonna decide for myself to consume them all now and ask him to be burned upon this altar of the violet transmuting flame of Archangel Zadkiel, and just watching them just go up in smoke. Now they do not exist and you're using your free will. Asking your I am presence to overlight this transaction of energy and that you are a free soul and keeping in mind that in your energy field, the minute you are born, the minute you come into the world, you have your own fingerprint. And that is a unique fingerprint that nobody else in the world has. So you don't have anything that binds you. You know, the minute you come in, that is it. You can be your own soul on your own journey. You don't owe anybody anything, really. So noticing your own unique fingerprint that you are on your own unique life path and how positive, how good that feels to be in that energy, that you're a free being. And now we're going to go ahead and ask that all soul contracts, all so oaths, all so agreements with anybody else that you may have friendships, enemies, um, you know, partnerships, children, just anybody that you might have, that all soul agreements, soul oaths, soul contracts that no longer serve you, that are harmful, that um, are completed, be instantly consumed in the altar of the all-consuming violet transmuting flame of Archangel Zachiel, and just seeing that whew, be transmuted straight off your heart energy, and that completes us that brings us right back into that uh, saint germain actually stands for the flame of freedom and the way that freedom comes about is through being able to be emotionally free and know that you are your own divine presence and that brings us full circle so thank you so much for tuning in today and look forward to connecting with you next week Thanks for tuning in to My Wild Magic with me, your host, Adrian Cobb. Each one of us has a sole purpose on this earth and a higher purpose full of creative expression and unique soul attributes. Make sure to tune in next week on TransformationTalkRadio.com to continue your journey home to your truest self and pursue the path of unconditional self-love. If you would like to learn more about me, visit MyWildMagic.com. Again, that's MyWildMagic.com. 
www.thepurpleshift.com. 